हेलो फ्रेंड्स यू आर वाचिंग इंजीनियरिंग मेड इजी आई एम ललित वशिष्ठ इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट इज ग्रेडियंट एक्चुअली ग्रेडियंट इज एन ऑपरेशन दैट इज परफॉर्म्ड ऑन ए स्केलर फंक्शन दैट रिजल्ट्स इन ए वेक्टर फंक्शन सो इन दिस वीडियो वी विल अंडरस्टैंड द बेसिक डेफिनेशन ऑफ ग्रेडियंट द फिजिकल सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ ग्रेडियंट एंड ऑल्सो द मैथमेटिकल एनालिसिस so first of all let's start with the physical significance what we mean by gradient what is gradient actually in nature we have uh, two kinds of fields like uh, scalar field and the vector field and uh, the examples of a scalar field is uh, temperature and uh, the examples of uh, vector fields are electric field magnetic field velocity okay so the scalar field like uh, temperature field has only the magnitude there is no direction associated with this we only have the magnitude but uh, vector fields have not only the magnitude but also the direction let's take an example of uh, a vector field like a velocity vector uh, if you see if we consider a flow of water then at various points the velocity and direction of the water particles or the atoms is different at some places it may have some direction and certain velocity and at other places in the volume it may have some other value of uh, magnitude and direction of velocity so it has a distribution of uh, velocity vector okay so it is a vector field while the example of uh, scalar field is the temperature field okay so in temperature we have uh, if we are standing at certain place and uh, we see that on moving uh, horizontally suppose uh, for example if we move uh, 100 uh, or 10 10 10 kilometers in horizontal direction then you will not see any change much change in uh, temperature but uh, if we move upwards upwards 10 kilometers or downwards in uh, into the earth 10 kilometers then you will see significant change in temperature although there is no direction associated with only the magnitude is associated with this uh, temperature field the scalar field so we can find vectors in different directions like uh, if we move upward as we know that uh, temperature varies as we go straight upwards then it varies at the fastest rate so if we move 10 kilometers uh, vertically upwards then we will see the maximum rate of uh, change of temperature and uh, but if we move slantly 10 kilometers then the rate of uh, change of temperature would not be maximum it would be smaller than that so what is the gradient actually the gradient we can define it as it is the magnitude or actually the magnitude of this vector function at any point in the region of the scalar field is maximum rate of increase of the scalar function at that point okay so in some direction if it is uh, varying at the maximum rate then that direction is the direction of the gradient actually gradient is a vector function and it operates on a scalar field and in the output we get the vector field so it is associated with the scalar fields but uh, the output is in the form of a vector the direction shows the direction of that vector shows the what direction it is having the fastest rate of increase or decrease fastest rate of change so this is the physical uh, significance of uh, the gradient at a surface in three dimensional space where the function has constant value we are talking about a scalar function so a constant value is known as equipotential surface or level surface okay so equipotential surfaces have the constant value on that surface so here uh, we will consider a scalar function uh, now let's see some mathematical uh, part of this uh, we will see uh, what is a gradient mathematically so let's consider a scalar vr it varies in three dimensions x y and z three axes okay so this fun this function varies uh, point to point in three dimensional space okay. now look at this uh, image these are three equipotential surfaces having constant value on this surface for example here we have uh, v equals to v not 
v0 is v and this v1 v0 v1 and v2 are the potentials on the surfaces equipotential the all three are equipotential this one is equipotential this one and this one also so at this place it has v0 equals to v and this is a minute difference dv between these two uh, surfaces equipotential surfaces so its uh, voltage is v plus dv and here again v plus dv plus dv so v plus 2 dv delta v okay small change delta v is small change so here we will understand what uh, we mean by the gradient mathematically so here uh, we want to find the gradient at point p so you see here that uh, if we consider a direction of pq then in this dl direction this is the pq direction and this p q dash this p q dash direction is the dn direction and this is the perpendicular direction so you know that this uh, if we see that this is some potential and here we have some increased potential at this point so from here to here if we move from here to here uh, that uh, we understand here that uh, dl is uh, larger than this dn this is a perpendicular distance this is slant okay this is if it, this is dl then this is just dl cos theta so this distance is uh, smaller so although the initial and final conditions if we subtract the final voltage minus initial voltage uh, from in this case and uh, in this case also pq dash then this difference is same but the distance is smaller in case of dn direction so here this uh, smallest distance shows the direction where there is the fastest rate of change highest rate of change of this voltage so we have the vector field we have the gradient vector in this direction okay so let's see it mathematically now here see that dv by dl is equals to limit dl tending to zero v1 minus v0 by dl what is this if we consider the direction of uh, pq this pq direction then for this this pq is the dl direction so this dv by dl is equals to limit if we uh, think that if we consider dl tending to zero then it is uh, v1 minus v0 this is v1 minus v0 by dl equals to v1 minus v0 by pq this dl is the pq okay and similarly dv by dn dv by dn is equals to in direction pq dash okay v1 minus v0 by pq dash v1 this is v1 potential at this place is v1 minus v0 by pq dash as we know that uh, this pq is more than pq dash so this dv by dn would be greater than dv by dl as uh, the dn is what dn is dl cos theta from this image you see this uh, dn dn is what dl cos theta this angle between these dl and dn is theta okay so you can write this dv by dn as dv by dn is dl cos theta so right here dl cos theta so if you rearrange this we will get uh, dv by dl dv by dl is equals to dv by dn cos theta on rearranging this so from this we get the relation between dv by dl and dv by dn so this vector dv by dn 1n is numerically equal to dv by dn and it is directional its direction is normal to the equipotential surface okay v equals to v naught this 1n is the unit normal vector dv by dn so we get the magnitude as uh, dv by dn and direction this is the vector and its direction is in this direction okay pq dash direction so this is the gradient factor having magnitude and direction both direction is normal okay because normally if we move normally then the maximum rate of uh, change is observed therefore the gradient is normal to this equipotential surface so it is called the gradient of the scalar v okay and the delta v is this is gradient of v is represented by this this is the del operator this delta is the 
del operator so it is denoted by g r a d v gradient of v equals to dv by dn 1 n okay this is the this gives it the direction unit vector normal unit vector so the gradient is a vector representing both magnitude and direction of maximum space rate of increase of a of a scalar so it is the in the direction of where it is it is a maximum space rate of increase of a scalar in the direction of that okay the gradient of a scalar quantity v can be expressed as in cartesian coordinates we can represent this gradient as this gradient delta v gradient of v equals to del v by del x 1x plus del v by del y 1y plus del v by del z 1z what does this mean actually this is the differentiation of this scalar field in with respect to x this is a partial derivative of uh, this scalar field v with respect to x this is the magnitude of this uh, gradient how it is changing in x direction how this scalar is changing in x direction and this 1x gives the unit vector in the x direction and similarly the unit vector in y direction unit vector in z direction this one is and this is the derivative partial derivative of this scalar field v with respect to y and they are telling how this uh, scalar field is changing in x y and z direction what is the rate uh, by which it is uh, varying in x y and z coordinates and the direction where it is varying the maximum would represent the gradient so its magnitude as we know that this is a simple vector this is simply a vector so its magnitude is given by under root of uh, uh, del v by del x whole square plus del v by del y whole square plus del v by del z whole square this is the magnitude since we have derived earlier that uh, dv by dl is equals to dv by dn cos theta and here from this we get dv is equals to dv by dn uh, from this dv by dn dl cos theta therefore this dv is equals to gradient of v dot dl so if we talk about the equipotential surface on equipotential surface we know that uh, it has constant value throughout the surface so the difference in voltage dv is zero so if dv is zero uh, on equipotential surface then from this equation this gradient of v will also be zero so this this what is this this is the del operator this is a differential operator it is a vector operator actually so it is uh, given by delta this del is equals to del by del x 1x plus del by del y 1y plus del by del z 1z these are the partial derivatives in x y and z directions and these are the unit vectors in x y and z directions so this is the del operator and differential operator so for a scalar field v r that we are considering here that is uh, having uh, that is varying in x y and z three dimensional space gradient of v can be written as gradient of v is equals to this use this operator on this so if we apply this gradient of v on this v then from this equation just replace v here in this equation gradient apply v here use v here so it becomes uh, del v by del x i cap from this del v by del y j cap plus del v by del z k cap these are the unit vectors in x y and z directions these i cap j cap and k cap respectively these uh, one more thing that these gradient lines are orthogonal orthogonal means perpendicular to the equipotential lines okay this is very important fact so the formula that we have seen was uh, for gradient was in cartesian coordinates now we will see two kinds of coordinate systems also the cylindrical coordinate and the spherical coordinates so in this way we can represent this is the gradient in cylindrical coordinate formula and this is the spherical coordinate uh, system uh, the gradient for spherical coordinate system so gradient of v in uh, cylindrical coordinate can be written as uh, del v by del r 1 r unit vector in r because in cylindrical coordinates three parameters are r phi and z and in this we have r theta and phi so these are the unit vectors 1 r 1 phi 1 z are the unit vectors in r phi and z so at uh, 
the point the gradient at point r phi z we represent it at this and at point uh, r theta phi we represent the gradient and spherical coordinates by this formula okay you can read it simply that uh, del v by del r 1 r plus del plus 1 by r del v by del phi 1 phi plus del v by del z 1 z these are the partial derivatives of this scalar field in these uh, directions for these parameters and here it is uh, del v by del r 1 r plus 1 by r del v by del theta 1 theta plus 1 by r sine theta del v by del phi 1 phi for this to understand you should have the knowledge of these cylindrical coordinates and spherical coordinates that we cannot cover in this lecture we will have a separate lecture for this for cylindrical and spherical coordinates here you just see the formula how we represent the gradient in both of these coordinate systems okay so hope you understood uh, the physical significance of gradient the mathematical concept and the definition of gradient and also the how we can represent the gradient in cartesian coordinates cylindrical coordinates and spherical coordinates the formula for this so thanks for watching have a nice day and don't forget to subscribe my channel for more videos my channel name is engineering made easy so thanks for watching have a nice day bye bye friends for more such videos you can uh, subscribe my channel engineering made easy and please don't forget to like and share the video if you liked it for more detailed information you can uh, visit my blog see you soon in the next video till then bye bye